I did drop an entire project called Might Delete Later, right? And, um, you know, obviously there's a bunch of tracks on there. Apparently there's there's a track on there called Pi. J. Cole Pi lyrics. And apparently J. Cole must have recorded this track literally in the last week or so, which I got to start giving my boy a little bit of credit. And the reason why I got to give him some credit is because, you know, even though, because I've seen that they took one of the clips that I that, that was like, critiquing him and how he was getting at uh, Kendrick and it went viral. I'm critiquing the way he went at Kendrick, but I'm not critiquing that he went at Kendrick. I want him to go at Kendrick. I can't wait till Drake goes at Kendrick. I like the back and forth. I'm just going to call it fair. And Drake is my favorite, but still I'm going to try to call it fair. And I just feel like the angle he went at Kendrick just ain't the angle to go at. You can't go at Kendrick about quality. Like, that was a quality conversation. Like, you 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 harpened on a bar just to really explain it to y'all. Um, J. Cole's seven-minute drill. He referred back to a bar that was initially used by Jay-Z that was talking about Nas and calling Nas trash. He was basically saying, yo, you, you have a one-hot album in every 10-year average. That's why he says... I think it was like your four albums in 10 years, nigga. I could divide. That's one, let's say two. Two of them shits was due. One was uh, the other was Illmatic. That's a one hot album every 10 year out or whatever he said. You get what I'm saying? That's why that bar was fire. He was breaking down. Uh, I'll go to it. Take over. That's, that's why that was fire, right? Like Jay-Z was literally summing up Nas' career, a guy who was really dope, but he was basically saying, he was basically saying, bro, like you're not that guy. Look. He says, four albums in 10 years, nigga, I could divide. That's one, let's say two. Man, two of them shits was due, right? Two of them shits are garbage. One was, ah, the other was Illmatic. So out of the four albums, two of them shits is garbage. One was, ah, and then the other is Illmatic, which is a classic. That's a one hot album every 10-year average. That's an indictment, like, ooh, shit. How you so good? You got one hot album every 10 years. That was the line that J. Cole was drawing upon. So when J. Cole comes out and says, hey, he says, um, um, four albums in 12 years, nigga, I could divide. Shit, if this is what you want, I mean, no, 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 no. If you divide four albums in 12 years, what you're going to get is one hot album every three years. That's what you're going to get with Kendrick. I mean, all right, all right, let me be a little fair because I'm because the Mr. Morale and Stepper shit I wasn't the biggest fan of. But the Pimper Butterfly Hot, damn classic. Good Kid Mad City classic. Okay, three out of 12, that's a one hot album every four year average. That's what we're going to come with. Because this is why I thought it was just a misguidance on him getting that Kendrick because Kendrick, if we're talking about catalog, has a very stellar catalog. This is going to be the problem, I think, going forward for... These guys. You see, Kendrick has gotten these guys. You know, put it like this. Like, these guys are competing, and we're, we're looking at all of them like they're competing as basketball players, right? Like, oh, okay, all of you guys are competing in the league. Except they're not competing with everything. They're not competing with hits. They're not competing with sales. They're not competing with, you know, who can make the best hook. They're competing in battle rap. And that's like a skill, right? And that skill is almost equivalent to... Okay, let me. It, it, Steph Curry going against Michael Jordan in the three point contest. Steph Curry smokes him, but who's a better basketball player? I think a lot would say Michael Jordan, right? So, this is the point I'm trying to tell you. Uh, the thing with Kendrick, while I think Drake is a better overall rapper than Kendrick, and I'm not just talking about bars, I'm just talking about overall. Remember, it's not just only, you see, lyrics and bars is only one facet, right? The thing is, Kendrick is Steph Curry. This thing you're competing with him in, he's the guy at, or allegedly the guy at when it comes to putting words together, even though to me he's kind of unproven, to be honest, right? You're competing with him in a very slither margin where you can't really compare. Number one, if we talk about who has the best albums, he's going to defeat y'all. 
whose whose bars are the most meaningful, who got the best bars, he probably is going to come on come out on top of that. So it becomes a very difficult situation for these guys. How do you try to attack the guy that is how do you beat the guy in a three-point contest who's a who's a three-point specialist when you're the guy like you're a better player but you do everything? Right? So that's going to be the problem. So when you hear J. Cole comes in and he says, yo, I'm going to talk about your discography. Uh, uh, no, you can't. I think that's the opposite. Kendrick could talk about y'all discography. Y'all can't talk about his. His discography has not been watered down. His discography has been lyrically superior. His discography, if we go just off pure numbers, has more classics than yours. And I would say even probably both of theirs. So you can't really attack him on that. So this is the problem I think is going to happen. How do you attack Kendrick Lamar? What's the attack of him? Yes, you, if we're going to make a list, if we could make a list, what do you attack him on? Okay, he doesn't rap that much. I would probably try to throw in the mix, yo, you, you, you fucking ducked a couple of, you know, fades when people responded. You always, you always throw stones, hide your hands. Yeah, I think those you could attack him with. But, um, what else would you attack him on? Also, I'll, I'll put this up too. I don't know why, if I'm J. Cole, maybe this would be considered um, personal. And even though they're going back and forth with each other, they haven't gotten personal yet. Trust me. They, trust me. They're they're still keeping it pretty, you know, cute, so to speak. They haven't gotten that personal yet. You know what I would say if I'm J. Cole? I would say... Nigga, how the hell you you turn into a hater when, nigga, I got into it, nigga, I got into it with Diddy over you allegedly. Y'all remember this? Y'all remember this? So this was, um, th this was the uh, story surrounding like Diddy and and J Cole allegedly fighting, which people believe that you know, um, what's the name got slapped. Says scandal and J Cole are, are typically mutually exclusive. The guy spends most of his time hunkered down in North Carolina with his wife, two kids, dressed like he's ready to join a pickup game at a moment's notice. But back in 2013, when he was a little bit more sociable, reveling in the fruits of being a popular rapper in his late 20s and attending large functions with other celebrities, there was one incident that quickly became infamous. It involved an altercation with the one and only Puff Daddy. The Gregarian veteran who spent much of the early 2010s reminding people that he was born in the 90s era when rappers actually put hands on each other when the, uh, while the incident spawned intrigue, it never ballooned into any real beef. In a tweet that he's still up, Puffy made a rare show of direct, directly addressing and downplaying it. Now, eight years later, Cole has cheekily re referenced the incident on his new album, allowing fans to remember the time that well, um, uh, remember that time well to reflect and laugh while hipping new listeners to the story. On let my go, uh, let my uh, let go of my hands. Cole raps, my last scrap was with Puff Daddy. Who would have thought? I bought that nigga album in the seventh grade and played it so much. You would have thought my favorite rapper was Puff um, back then. I ain't no shit. Now I know too much. The song features Cole telling about what I was like. Okay. So what happened back in 2013? As the story goes in v v MTV VMAs, after party, Diddy found himself back in 90s mode. When he happened upon... Kendrick Lamar, who just dropped a thunderous control verse. The one where he shouted out every one of his rap peers, J. Cole included, before declaring his intention to murder them and also crowned himself the king of New York, even though he's from L.A. Puffy took umbrage, took offense um, with this flex and reportedly tried to pour a drink on Kendrick's head. Think about it. Puffy tried to pour a drink on Kendrick's head. That part has been hotly disputed, though, um, at which point a nearby Cole intervened and a scuffle ensued. So if I'm Cole, you was about to get sunned by Diddy. I jump in, try to defend your honor. Me and Diddy get into the squabbles, right? How dare you diss me later? Like, how dare you? Nigga, I, I, put, my, I put myself on the line for you. Nigga, I took a fade for you. How dare you diss me later? That's very di disrespectful, right? Look, um, the scuffling ensued. Cole's right-hand man, Ibrahim Hamad, disputed some of the wilder allegations then and continues to now. Who knows? Maybe that 2020 tweet is what inspired J. Cole to finally address it. What 2020 tweet? They're talking about... Let me see. Yeah. 
It said Diddy and a scrap, blah, blah. Um, this is Cole's manager said, that's definitely not what happened. It says Diddy allegedly attempted to pour a drink on Kendrick and Cole intervened. Yeah, he, he's saying Cole's manager said that didn't happen. And he said that in 2020. And recently in 20, well, in 2013, he had said this. The internet's a crazy place. You niggas reporting shit with no facts. Cole ain't get thrown out no party and damn sure ain't get beat up. Okay. That was when it happened. Right. Um, but as to Cole lyrics, make clear something happened, just nothing too serious. Puffy seems to be, as they say, wild and for respect around that time. One year later, he had a dust up with Drake outside Club Live in Miami. The source of frustration this time, Drake, 0 to 100 song, we think we know is one of his best Lucy releases, but allegedly the beat was belonging to Puff, who had contracted Drake to write some verses for him. Four years later, Drake, much like Cole, addressed it a whack as a scuffle with the water along the bridge. Um, and while we're here, it came up, blah, blah, that Combs attacked, blah, blah, blah. Okay, cool. So, yeah. That was a conversation, people. So, if I'm, if I'm, If I'm J. Cole, I'm bringing that up. If that has any merit. Yo, Kendrick, I, we were like brothers. I never had no jealousy of you. I stuck up for you. That's the only angle I see them having against Kendrick. Kendrick, I know you're trying to be competitive in rap, but you come off like a jealous, a, a jealous, a lazy, jealous, bitter bitch who wants to have a position that you're not, you're not, you're not trying to, Keep defending. This hip-hop. You said you was the best. Nigga, I feel I'm the best now. Rap with me. Instead, you only come on the scene when you're trying to diss. I didn't get here by dissing people. All your big moments. And, and that's that, that's going to be a little knock, knock against um, um, Kendrick. Your big moments are coming from you name-dropping people, but we're not seeing you engaging in battles. So, again, when you're trying to think about these angles that you could get at Kendrick Lamar, it's going to be difficult, bro. Like, it's pretty, like, it's super difficult if you ask me. Anyway, on the song Pie, uh, J. Cole did say a bunch of things. Now people are saying this is going at, um, this is going at Kendrick, okay? So this, Absol and Daylight is on the first two, pretty much, and then the last verse is Cole. Cole says, uh, prayer hands for the land where they, pr where they spray in pellets and turn in your mans to an angelic being, being and freeing him from this cram hellish hole. The weather is cold from the jealous souls that fan the fellas. I danced as well as Chris Breezy when the bullets sprayed, no, when the bullet starts strain careless, I won't let him Swiss cheese me. Got plans that I can't fail at seeing bo plenty bodies trembling resembling Cam Reddish, so full of potential but never given a re real chance to develop. My head envelopes the pen. These ain't fan letters I craft. His a Okay, this is where he's going in, um, Kendrick. His album dropped. It was trash. I literate like I could spell it. Is you a demon or is that your demeanor for the gram? Tell us. They plead the fifth. I'm seeing hints of a trans fella. In cancer culture vicinity, he's no killer. Trust me, beneath his choosing identity, there's still a pussy, period. Now, this is interesting because on on um, Mr. Morale and the Big Steppers, uh, you actually see Kendrick rap about. He, he raps about, like, you know, some of his family issues and, like, I think there was a trans individual in there. But it seems like this might be going to Kendrick too, right? Like, look, it, it, yeah. His album drop was trash. He says, I literate. Okay, and then he's like, um, is you a demon or is that your demeanor on the gram, right? Th this is hard to think that's going to Kendrick because I don't even think, Ke what's Kendrick Lamar is even Instagram? I don't even know. They plead the fifth, I'm seeing hints of a trans fellow. I think the trans fellow thing, though, um, some people thought was talking about, here we go, on, on Mr. Morale and the Big Steppers, he was talking about um, some of that shit. Anyway, blood spilling, um, blood spilling monthly rather take a weekly rather weekly as a myriad of bodies drop where bricks get karate chopped to maximize the dojo comprehende now when you, once you see dojo you're gonna think kung fu kenny like these are the things that it, it's kind of playing up on some of these themes that kendrick has almost embraced right so this is why people feel like this these bars are going at kendrick as well i wonder will my friends make it past the pearly gates so should we 
so we could kick it. But based on what the their sins are, probably not. Hit lick after lick like lollipop. You niggas take a lie detect. The polygraph will probably pop. You know my zone. I live here at the top. Right now I'm home. Macaulay cock. I keep the shoddy cocked in case somebody plot to rob me of this godly spot. Jermaine's monstrous like that nigga, which is like that, you know, like that nigga of Jumanji. They probably know how we rock. All these bodies I don't call it, I should probably stop. Nah, fuck that. I willingly venture into the dens of lions on some kill or be sent to a funeral home facility to test my ability with this thrilling agenda, but it's hard to meet my match with my rap saying that tender. Since Bert, the kid knew his worth, never wallowed in sorrow the game he dispersed in these verses bring a gilly potential a milli from pencils. Never will my rap ability cripple. Now please, hold your L like you garden Philly's young center. Okay. Quick to leave a chick curve it's only one of me, but I bet it's six hers. In my mobile device, you can feel the motive in these quotables, right? Cole is the nicest, but ain't shit about these vocals polite. Focus on the bifocals while I'm walking on tight ropes from a height. You folks only get this scope from a fight. How many verses of the year is Cole gonna write? Now, let me say this. Oh, Give me one second. Give me one second, chat. What the fuck? Uh, give me one second. I ordered food, so it's... They're at my gate. I gotta let them in. Uh, <laughs> uh, all right, all right, all right. All right. Give me one second. I'm gonna play a little Kendrick bit of this. Kendrick Lamar and Jake... Here we go. ...of what it was all about. I had to have a conversation with him. Tell, I just had to find out for myself, like, yo, what? You came at me, dog? What's that? And Kendrick did explain on many occasions that his relationship with J. Cole did not change as a result of that verse. Specifically, where are you at, like, with the J. Cole? Specifically, where are you at with a Drake or so on and so forth? I respect the music. I like that. For sure. I respect them uh, as individuals and creators. And Kendrick seemingly wasn't lying as some months after the control verse, P. Diddy allegedly tried to pour a drink on Kendrick at a party. Diddy was in a drunken state and was pissed off about Kendrick's King of New York line and J. Cole defended him. It was Cole's intervention that led to the infamous scuffle between himself and Diddy. I mean, anyone out here getting in a fight with J. Cole of all people, you're clearly just a massive piece of shit. Let's just call it for what it is. And verse even led to the fight with Puff and Cole. J. Cole would mention the fight years later on a track called Let Go of My Hand. My last scrap was with Puff Daddy, who would have thought it? As far as award shows for the year, Kendrick cleaned up with BET, winning Lyricist of the Year, MVP of the Year, and Album of the Year, all over J. Cole. Kendrick also clinched the number one spot for MTV's Hottest MC, and J. Cole didn't even make the list. With MTV, man, because you did not make the freshman. Oh, man, or not the freshman list, but the hottest MC. Right, list. right. Inexcusable. It man. is inexcusable, <laughs> man. I'm like, this dude's got a gold album. Word, like, what do you Platinum like? single, gold album, Grammy nominated, you know. You gotta kind of be like, come on, son, like, word. Yeah, it was. It just let me know, like, what that whole thing was. And I normally take these lists with a huge grain of salt, but I, I do think it's important to highlight just how many times Kendrick has won over J. Cole because I feel like that feeds into the chip that's on J. Cole's shoulder in recent years. To further confirm that the two were still on good terms, they celebrated Cole's birthday in New York together, and some months later, J. Cole brought Kendrick on stage while he was on tour in LA. However, it was in that same year that J. Cole would release what many people would consider to be his classic album, and on that project, he had a few little jabs for Kendrick. I don't play no games, boy, I ain't no joke. Like the great rap Kim, when I make my notes. So it's kind of similar to Kendrick's control verse where Cole is paying homage to a bunch of legends and he's putting himself in the mix. Or you might be Drizzy Drake or Kendrick Lamar. But check the birth date, nigga. You ain't the guy. Call the guy. Nigga. This line acts as a double entendre where one, 
Cole inserts himself as being above both Kendrick and Drake, and two, Rakim commonly goes by the God MC, and Cole just so happens to share the same birthday, January 28th. So at this point, it's just all friendly competition in the spirit of hip hop, but it was the control verse that triggered this type of competition. J. Cole would also make it very clear on his track Fire Squad of where he felt he was at in the rap game. Ain't no way around it no more. I am the greatest. Lot of niggas set on the throne. I am the latest. Cole also makes it known that he's not afraid of anyone. I ain't afraid of you niggas. I'll end up fading you niggas. At the end of the record, J. Cole brings up the debate of who's really the king and claims that the crown is his for the taking. Why the people debate who's the king of this rap game? Here comes Lil Old Jermaine to snatch the crown from whoever y'all think has it. But that would not be all as J. Cole had another subliminal for Kendrick on G-O-M-D. When I'm in LA, I'm the best in the West. You can test, you can test. I'ma stretch niggas out. I mean, if we're talking about the West Coast in 2014, I don't know who, I don't know who else he would be talking to other than Kendrick. However, it was in this year that Kendrick would win BET Lyricist of the Year again over J. Cole, and everyone remembers the infamous Macklemore Grammy snub. Macklemore and Ryan Lewis. With all that said, as we head into 2015, talks about this joint Kendrick and Cole project are still very much alive. Is there gonna be a Kendrick Lamar J. Cole album? Man, definitely, definitely. I, I still would love to do it for sure. I, I talked to the bro, um, I don't know, probably a little bit over a month. And um, he's on a tour rocking, so we're gonna try to make something happen. However, the closest thing we would get to a joint album would be on November 15th, when both Cole and Kendrick released a song each, titled Black Friday, where they're both going in on each other's beats. Let's myself with the wisdom, my play is a me no miss, so pay them in for performance. Their flows hit different chicks. Let my bricks and hoes see me fish and chips. Now the feedback that we got from those records was pretty well unanimous. Kendrick going so hard I forgot Cole was on it. Sheesh. Kendrick was the destruction, J. Cole was the recovery. Kendrick was rapping like his life was on the line in this one. And I can't disagree, he really was rapping like his life was on the line and making a statement. And I personally believe that it's the element of competition further enforced by both the fans and the media that would eventually come between these two artists. As we close out the year, J. Cole would clinch BET's Album of the Year. However, Kendrick would win Album of the Year at the Grammys. I mean, they're both phenomenal projects. One got a Grammy, one got a BET award. I'm happy with it. They both deserve it. And even in 2016, 2017, talks of this joint project is still going. There is a Kendrick Cole out. There is a Kendrick, it's in, they got it. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. They got something to work. They've been working on that motherfucker for a while. And to make the fans go even crazier with anticipation, people got even more excited when Kendrick brought out J. Cole in Detroit. First things first, there's a piece of And just a few weeks later, TDE Punch would share a tweet saying, I was just playing about that Dot and Cole joint. It's coming for sure, maybe. I don't know, it might happen. Probably. Actually, hit them. This joint album got teased for years and years and years. But the fans still kept up hope as at the end of 2017, the snowman himself was able to secure a feature from both J. Cole and Kendrick for his track American Dream. Then I put it on plate, I'm running the game, you're running in place. Fly on what is known to the traveling man. However, Jeezy approached this record a little bit sneaky as he didn't tell Kendrick or Cole that they would both be on the same song together. God. Did he know Kendrick was gonna be on it too? Nah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> so when they heard the finished product, you know, everybody kinda knew everybody was on the record. And it really makes sense because J. Cole is really rapping on his verse, yet Kendrick took this very melodic approach and isn't really rapping at all. I feel like if Kendrick heard Cole's verse or even knew Cole would be on the record, he might have decided to really rap instead or maybe it wouldn't have changed anything as the theme of this record may not have called for that level of competing. The American dream. As we close out 2017, 2018, Kendrick had a hell of a year in the awards category, winning BET's Album of the Year and Lyricist of the Year 
over J. Cole. Kendrick would also win several Grammys, but most noteworthy, Rap Album of the Year, and we can't forget that he was the first hip-hop artist ever to win a Pulitzer Prize. Awarded to Dam by Kendrick Lamar. And now we get a line from J. Cole where he voices his opinions about the Grammys. The streets don't give a fuck about the Grammys. At the time, Cole had seven Grammy nominations with zero wins. And then we got Kendrick cleaning up. He had like 12 Grammys to his name. You could take this line however you want. And it will be at this point where J. Cole finally shuts down the idea of a joint project and basically says that it's not gonna happen. So that's not that's not a real thing. That's like a, some fantasy thing. It's that, not. It didn't come from nowhere. It came from us. Yeah. You know what I mean? But it's not like it's something that's actively happening. And as time goes on, we has Kendrick and Cole been like static? I thought it was always like BFFs. I thought there was a time that Kendrick was trying to turn, not necessarily turn Cole against Drake, but like bring Cole over here, like yo. That nigga pop. We real rappers. We care about social issues. Come over here with me. Like, yo, we belong together. Fuck that nigga. I thought that was happening for a while. We get nothing but nonstop comparisons and questions of who's the better rapper. Who's the better storyteller? J. Cole or Kendrick? Greatest rapper of this generation? J. Cole or Kendrick? Who's the better rapper? J. Cole or Kendrick? And at the time, the overwhelming majority would say that, that Kendrick was the better rapper. However, outside of a Black Panther soundtrack and a few features, Kendrick is very much absent between the years of 2018 and 2021. And while Kendrick has his feet up, we see this epic shift in J. Cole, where he begins to reshape the narrative of who's the best. Niggas been counting me out, I'm counting my bullets, I'm loading my clips. Kill them strangers to the blood, smoke, gun smoke. You niggas don't want smoke, no guts like that, switch it, we just smoke. Okay, no problem, I show up on every one album, you know what the outcome will be. From this day forward, I move with a new ferocity. Yeah, I'm the GOAT, no nigga don't at me. Put on your coat, the world will get colder. This is my year, don't say I ain't told you. This is my year, don't say I ain't told you. Something changes with J. Cole. 12 features in 2018 and 16 features in 2019 and he pretty much smoked them all. Now the very last time these two will be heard on the same record was on Dreamville's Under the Sun where Kendrick had an uncredited hook. I woke up for some money. And even in 2020 fans are still talking about this Kendrick and Cole project and this time TDE Punch totally shuts it down. One fan posted, I want Lamar on an EP with Cole. Punch responded, that's never going to happen. Another fan then asked if they were maybe planning something bigger than an EP, to which Punch responded, zero tracks, not happening. So what was once a maybe is now just a very stern no. However, it would appear that even after all the work J. Cole put in, it still wasn't enough as he was still being cast aside when compared to Kendrick and Drake. Cole got rings, but he, I, I mean, I don't nah, put Cole, Cole one of the level. greatest. He's one of he the is. greatest. I don't put him on the level of Drake and Kendrick. Being as competitive as he is, I feel like these opinions begin to bother J. Cole and it helps to mold the hungry artists that we've seen in recent years. It's around this time where I feel J. Cole asked himself a few questions like, how do I want to be remembered? How do I want to close out my legacy? And do I really want to finish this thing off with a bronze medal? I had to make a real decision. Like, have you wrote your best song? Did you leave no stone unturned creatively? And when I thought about that feeling, I was like, nah, I'm not cool with that. And in my opinion, he made his choice. And this is where things start to get interesting. Fans started to speculate that J. Cole took subliminal shots at Kendrick on his album The Off Season. Big step, but nigga don't get stepped on. Now, there were countless posts on Reddit and people on YouTube who really felt like the words big stepper don't get stepped on was a direct reference to Kendrick's Mr. Morell and the Big Steppers. However, Cole's track came out 11 months before Kendrick's album title was even announced. So unless J. Cole had some inside information about the album title, I'm not sure how this theory holds much weight. 
I mean, you guys could tell me what you think. I'm, I'm all for speculating, but to me, it really got to make sense. In 2021, J. Cole would address his position of being in third place on a track titled Heaven's EP. Some people say that I'm running third. They threw the bronze at me. Behind Drake and Dot, yeah, them niggas are superstars to me. So J. Cole acknowledges that many people consider him as being number three, but instead of tearing a strip off Kendrick or Drake, he tips his hat to them, complimenting their place in hip hop. The tale's official. The best nigga breathing it just failed to hit you. You couldn't tell cause you failed for the bells and whistles. However, Cole makes it clear that the fans got his ranking fucked up and calls himself the hardest in the game. He goes on to explain that the people fell for the bells and whistles. This could be alluding to the many times that he got snubbed during awards, or the fact that he's been known to do very little promo when it comes to rolling out his albums. There's just nothing flashy about J. Cole. He just looks like a normal fucking dude. And very seldom is he in the media, unless it's for his music. Too much hunger, it's no wonder these niggas can't keep up. So saying yes to a feature just means I'm about to eat lunch, bitch. In the first line, Cole references just how hungry he's become for that number one spot. And in the second line, he alludes to the fact that every feature he does, he wraps circles around the artist requesting it. It's been exactly 1,746 days since the last time Kendrick Lamar dropped an album. Since the last time Kendrick Lamar dropped an album. 1,855 days. I've been going through something. Miss that in the city, miscommunication to keep homo detector busy. No protection is risky. After a five year hiatus on May 13th, 2022, Kendrick released Mr. Morell and the Big Steppers. The album received mixed reviews, but in my opinion, was his most personal and introspective album to date. I even got a t shirt with the album on it. That's, that's how much I like the album. Again, fans speculated that Kendrick was throwing shade at J. Cole on his track count me out ain't nobody but the mirror looking for the fall off many people seem to believe that because j cole's upcoming project is called the fall off that this could have been a very direct shot and initially i didn't think this was a, a shot at j cole but j cole appears to respond directly to this a little bit later down the line with that said j cole would appear to take more shots at kendrick on johnny p's caddy with benny the butcher if i put your favorite rapper neck in the noose never letting them loose when the track initially came out some speculated that cole was actually dissing benny on his own record but even benny said that he felt cole was dissing someone else if you ask me he was talking to somebody yeah so the guys who everybody compare him with and put him in a rink with like to me, that's who he's looking to. I'm probably gonna go to hell if Jesus asks for a feature. In the first line, Cole makes it clear that he's bodying anyone on a feature and even claims that Jesus himself would take a loss. One person that's imitated Jesus in the past would be none other than Kendrick Lamar. Some see the glass is empty, I see a glass full of ether collecting his bread and mass like he a Catholic preacher. This line appears to be a reference to Kendrick's music video for Humble, where Kendrick is dressed up as a Catholic preacher, and you can see the empty glass and bread sitting on the table. Cole makes it clear that he sees a glass full of ether, which could be a reference to Nas's infamous diss to Jay-Z. Oh God, the best rapper alive, headshot. J. Cole ends off the verse to state that he's the best rapper alive. I'm the best rapper alive. I'm the best rapper alive. I'm the best rapper alive. I am the greatest rapper alive. Now go and ask the best rappers that died. They tell you he. I think everybody says that. Says that though. Never lied. So damn great, motherfucker. I've died. And I gotta agree with Benny. I do think he is talking to someone. And that someone I feel like is Kendrick Lamar. However, in my view, one of the most obvious and direct shots to date would come on J. Cole's track, The Secret Recipe. Niggas fake progressive and woke. I started saying less. I had to stop it. Peeped how they profit off of racial stress. It's no secret that the themes within Kendrick's music often reflects on racial tension and the struggle that comes with it. Drake more or less labeled Kendrick as a grifter in the past, and I feel like J. Cole is taking a similar stance. 
studio steppers moving extra on songs fake and rep. The first line appears to be a reference to Kendrick's Mr. Morell and the Big Steppers, where Cole calls him out for faking the funk when it comes to the message in his music. Niggas making threats and I laugh, that's cause you ain't a threat. Don't ask how I feel about no rappers, should they okay I guess. So again, J. Cole is not looking at any of these other rappers as a threat, but most importantly, he doesn't look at Kendrick as a threat. Smoking on your top five tonight. And now for the most damning piece of all, first person shooter. A lot of niggas debating my numero, not the three, not the two on the UNO. So right off rip, J. Cole makes it clear on Drake's own record that he's number one. Numero UNO, me and Drizzy this shit like the Super Bowl. Man. Now, when J. Cole refers to himself and Drake as being the Super Bowl, what two teams make it to the Super Bowl? The two best teams. By inserting himself and Drake as being the best, J. Cole is essentially omitting Kendrick from the equation entirely. Like a kid that had bad from January to November, nigga, it's just you and Cole. Again, Drake supports Cole's previous Super Bowl analogy by stating that it's just him and Cole in the running. I'm naming the album to fall off, it's pretty ironic cause it ain't no fall off for me. And now we get back to Kendrick's line on Count Me Out with his reference, nobody but the mirror looking for the fall off. And Cole makes it clear that there's no falling off for him. Love when they argue the hardest MC. Is it K Dot? Is it Aubrey or me? Okay, so he mentions Kendrick and Drake, but. We the big three like we started a league, but right now I feel like Muhammad Ali. So this is very much a backhanded compliment. He calls himself Muhammad Ali. Now, who's Muhammad Ali? Just think about that. The Spider-Man meme is me looking at Drake. Again, as they continue to remove Kendrick from the equation, they need to be prepared for what's to come. And I can almost guarantee that Kendrick will have some form of response to this record. Guaranteed. Everybody step as we're fucking it. Everybody breakfast and I'm about to clear my plate. I mean, at this point, I don't think J. Cole can make it any more obvious who he's talking about. When it comes to his collaboration records with Drake, there's an ongoing theme in their music that people seem to overlook, and their track Evil Ways is another example of just that. High up in arenas where they see they faves, aka me and Drizzy Drake, we the wave. Again, Cole is positioning himself and Drake as being the top two. So if you're Kendrick Lamar, how are you to perceive this? When two of the artists that you've been up... By the way, this was before Kendrick dropped his song. This video was done three weeks ago. Kendrick dropped on Metro's project two weeks ago. ...again since the beginning of your career are making these style of records. Then when we look at the reality of the situation, which is the fact that Kendrick does not like Drake, how do you expect him to respond? Like I said, I mean, like I'll put my entire fucking YouTube channel on the line here. Like Kendrick will have a response to these records. I stay out of beef, see niggas DNA get rearranged. J. Cole continues to bait Kendrick with the line, see dudes DNA get rearranged, which would be a reference to Kendrick's track DNA. We can't continue to just ignore this. Like it's not happening. I mean, there is many signs. However, J. Cole wasn't done and even had more subliminals for Kendrick on his recent release, Might Delete Later. Niggas swear they compare, but the truth humble. They get fuck 112, you couldn't do numbers. In the first line, Cole references how he's often compared with someone, and that someone would evidently be Kendrick with the use of the word humble. Oh, bitch, be humble. Hold up, bitch. Sit down. Hold up. In the second line, Cole says you couldn't do numbers, which is in reference to Kendrick's last project, where many considered it to be a flop, given the fact that it was his lowest selling album in the last 10 years. I'm the one that niggas fear on the low ski. In the first line, J. Cole makes it clear that certain rappers are afraid of him on the low. This ties perfectly into what Joe Budden said about Kendrick Lamar. Kendrick talking shit to anybody in the world but a nigga named Jermaine. <laughs> Heard her talking like we peers, but they grossly mistaken and it's blatant. In the second line, Cole points out directly that people think he's friends with Kendrick, but that it's blatantly obvious this is not the case. The reality of the situation is the two have not been seen in the same room together in six, seven years. Zero collaborations have happened, zero support for one another's projects. 
maybe they've been secretly beefing. And they don't even follow each other on social media. And I don't know if they ever followed each other, but I'm pretty, I'm pretty sure they did. And many people would argue that J. Cole made it clear in his 2021 interview with Kevin Durant that he valued his relationships with Drake and Kendrick. I, I, I would, you know, I don't want to be like, damn, I never fucked, I, we never kicked it, you know what I mean? Like, we never really even did nothing. So like, I, I'm, I'm at that point where it's like, I'm more interested in the genuine relationship. Okay, so who does he have a relationship with today? Who's he making records with? Who's he taking pictures with? Who's he showing up on stage for? He's talking about Drake here, not not Kendrick. Back in 2020, J. Cole released somewhat of a roadmap slash schedule for his music. Based on the trajectory of what we've seen, he appears to be following this to a T. So before we get the fall off, I believe we'll be getting something in the form of a mixtape or EP called It's a Boy. Regardless of the schedule, I think it's safe to assume that not only will J. Cole continue to strive for this number one spot, but that he's willing to go to whatever lengths that is needed to get there. The situation with J. Cole is something very uncommon in hip hop. J. Cole's name is already cemented in the history books. He's extremely rich. He's extremely successful. The common path that we've seen with most artists is that at some point they lose the hunger that they once had. J. Cole is an anomaly in the sense that his music is only mm, interesting. <clears throat> That's a pretty good breakdown. Uh, what's the dirt? Shout out to that person. Uh, the homie looked like he did. He did a good job putting things together. I, I, I like that meticulous putting shit together and kind of coming up with like you know an accurate narrative. Okay. Uh, all right. Anyway, we're still we're still on this verse, right? This is the song called Pie on the uh, album. I keep a shoddy cock in case somebody plot, uh, plot to rob me of this godly spot. Jermaine Monstrous, like that nigga off Jumanji. They know how he rock. All these bodies I don't caught, I should probably stop. Nah, fuck that. I willingly venture into a den of lions on some kill or be killed, on some kill or be sent to a funeral home facility to test my ability with this thrilling agenda. But it's hard to meet my match when my raps ain't that tender. Since birth, the kid knew his worth. Never wallowed in his game, or never wallowed in sorrow. The game he dispersed in these verses bring a gilly potential from a milli from pencils. Never will my ability cripple. I think I read all this already. Now hold your L, whatever, whatever. Okay. Hmm. People thought he was talking the future in, in Sticks and Stones. But I think this song's old. I swear this song's old. And I think it's something because he says, does he say Pluto in, in the song or, or whatever? Let me see. So much drama on the street, I feel the beef is random. Murder galore, turn to Thor, I gotta keep a hammer. Case, weather, get inclement, shots rain on the innocent. The neighbors still don't know who sent them shits, it's like a secret Santa. Me, I'm out here reaching for a higher frequency, I plan Rest my feet in, presidents, in presidential suites or sleep in beach cabanas, skeeting on thousand count sheets i'm hitting freaks in tandems bust them down then throw them in the cab like they from east atlanta how it feel to see the flyest bitch and know he could land them every word i speak on beaks is beats is guaranteed to feed a fandom damn he going off weaklings want to walk want to walk inside my sneakers watching from the bleachers only time they see the roles reverse is when they lease a phantom bad investment but what could you have expected moms was broke in my whole adolescence, never had a lesson. Except for pawn shop hustles from the time collections, had her stressing. I ain't gonna lie, this boy been rapping, bro. Like, just reading it, you like, just reading it alone, you're like, yo, this nigga is. Like, some of the shit he's doing just lyrically here is, is superior. Bitches could, couldn't tell if I was poor or just bad at dressing. It was a bit of both. When I took, up, took it up top, I took an oath. I was going to hit a lick, break bread with my dogs, and split a loaf. Damn. That's a good bar, too. And took over the game, make sure that my name's considered GOAT. Now I'm back home as the best in the world. The fall off come and hear the growth. Damn. I do like the fact that uh, Cole, 
Cole is proclaiming to be number one now. Only thing that's gonna hold, uh, that's gonna, the only thing that's fucking up the optics slightly. I'm not saying it should be for Drake, but when he stands really close to Drake, people almost feel like he's getting a little broed by Drake. That's the thing. And if you're the best, you don't get a little broed. You know what I mean? It's like, it's like when Kobe really felt he was like the best. He wanted to be the guy on the team. He didn't want to stand next to Shaq anymore. You know? Is this one? They got a high day face. It was predicted a nigga to fall. It turns out that was not the case. I'm rocking a mask with a lot of cash. It looked like I robbed a bank. Can't even rob the bank that I use. My money's not with Chase. Foreign deposit safes. I'm writing this shit on a private plane. Sometimes I'll be flying commercial still. These things get rich and become so detached. The music start having that surface feel. Not a subliminal. Speaking in general. Feelings get hurt when words get spilled. Sticks and stones may break your bones, but saying my name in a verse will kill. Word to the wise, nigga, we heard them all them lies before. My number one comes from albums. Theirs is burgers and fries to go. Go against me, your odds is low. Who is this to? My number ones come from albums. Theirs is from burgers and, burgers and fries to go. We could think of it like one of these artists has gotten a, gotten a deal to, um, you know, like a McDonald's meal or whatever. Or you could think of it like, nah, he's just using a regular... Fast food reference. Yo, my number ones is from albums. Your number ones is from fast food spots. Um, go against me. Your odds is low. I don't even got no ops for real. Niggas, just give me my props for real. I just did everything. I'm about to chill. Count the mills in my crib on top of the hills. Mad chips, cash rich, my stack thick. I'm Dr. Phil, stack, stash thick. Um, I'm Steve Harvey. Bad bitch, two friends, hat trick, call three bodies and tell them to go like they E-40. Damn, okay, that boy's going off. That boy for sure going off. Hmm. We obviously, we paid attention to the seven-minute drill, but there was other shit in here, clearly. Hey, uh, Drill, if, if you in here, you were sending me some subliminals and shit that he had in his um, shit. Uh, what is this? Okay, here we go. Oh, the truth in the bees. That's the one. Okay. So he starts off by saying, niggas ain't about to outwork me. Go to sleep late, still waking up early. Look at my belly, I'm hungry. Y'all niggas desperate and thirsty. You can't even tell there's a difference. Hungry is when you're relentless. Even when you, you when your idols look you dead in the face and tell you you can't, you know that he meant it. But when you call, you attempt it. Come, let me show you a template. I had to grow out the concrete. I had to stroll through the trenches. Uh, I had to stroll through the trenches. Then he said, I can't do edibles. My head's spinning too much. Fell off the pedal, said I'm never getting back up. Done trying to be perfect. That shit's exhausting. The inf an infinite force that nitpicking niggas get lost in. I'm scribbling thoughts. My pencil is sharpening. Trust my pen. Been trying to limit the crossing. The best part of making this cake is licking the frosting. And Barry been saying he love when I spit like I'm... What? And Barry been saying he love when I spit like I'm dark skin. And you know what he mean. I got a 34 ways out of 40 jeans. Uh, somehow I still got too big for my britches and I tore through the seams. There go my Achilles heel. Been trying to do everything. Thank God for my nigga LB. What would I do with no team? I wouldn't do anything. I would just sit on this music and hold it. Wait for some perfect moment. Wondering why he ain't came. Meanwhile, the world done changed. Suddenly, songs I was loving last year don't feel the same. Somebody feel my pain. Somebody say I changed. All these years done passed. I hope I ain't still the same. All these songs I'm on, ain't nobody killed Jermaine. Ooh, this is where I think he's getting at uh, Kendrick. He says, please, somebody say I changed. All these years done passed. I hope I still ain't the same. All these songs I'm on, ain't nobody killed Jermaine. Isn't that rather strange? I wrote a couple, I wrote a number of bad refrains, but isn't that life, dude? Make a few hits, but you got to live through the strikes too. Instead of pretending I'm some incredible nigga, I just let him hear it all. 
Oh, I just let him hear all of it. The good, the bad, the ugly, the strong, the weak, it's me. The nigga that thought of it, all the portrayals of anything, different or fraudulent. You want to tap into your greatness? Well, here's the starter kit, the fall off. How many bullets can fit in the cartridges? I'm letting off. I'm letting them off on intentions to rip through your cartilage. My nigga just told me you're tripping for thinking of calling quits. Whoa. Yeah, this nigga's rapping, bro. I'm going to be honest with you. This is the best Cole rapping. So so I, I saw some J. Cole fans get mad at me. They're like, yo, you said Cole's peak was uh, Forest Hills Drive. And when I said that, it, was, it wasn't necessarily just about rapping. That was his peak in him and, as an artist. What I think he's trying to strive for now, he wants to be the best rapper. Uh, I think, you know, you know, when you think about Take Care isn't one of the best albums because it was just best rapping. Like, it was, it was an amazing album because it was a great balance. I think Kendrick, not Kendrick, I mean, Cole these days, he only wants to prove himself lyrically, hanging bar for bar, going toe-to-toe -to -toe with these guys. And that's a rapping conversation. That doesn't mean he's at his peak when it comes to song making ability to send third. I think he is rapping bar for bar like he could compete with anybody. That nigga look like he's trying to rap himself out of poverty and he's goddamn filthy rich. But it does that's not the only thing that goes into being an artist, you know? So again, I, I'm gonna salute him on his rapping, but I do think his peak was 2014 Forest Hill Drives. Like to me, a peak for any artist is going to be when you could still lyrically display um, your dexterity, your um, your potentness, how good you are, but you're not just, like, making a bunch of freestyles, right? Like, you, you, you're you also making dope songs. You're also, you know, doing what an artist does, which is use that one tool of rapping great to allow you to, to open up and do much more things, which I think back then on Forest Hills Drives, I definitely think that I... Um, Cole did, and um, for the people who are just saying that just because he's rapping the best now, he's the best, nah, no. Nah. Okay. Cole has little to no hits. I'll hop in the 